And welcome back to the Learn to Code podcast. And today I'm going to be talking about commitment. Yes, commitment. Uh, I mentioned it back in episode one. Um, at the same time, I was talking about a lot of subjects, but today I want to focus on, on, on that. So why is this? Um, many people that begin their code or programming career, let's call it like that, um, uh, at the beginning, they are going to find a lot of resources online, especially on YouTube. There, there has been a, an explosion of tutorials in YouTube. Uh, the truth is that even though YouTube is free and is available in many places in this world, um, the thing is that um, those tutorials tend to stick to the beginner section of the programming language way too far. So uh, it's not a structured course. Uh, most of these tutorials um, just uh, mess around with the hello world uh, examples. And probably uh, they begin uh, touching other sections of the programming language. Uh, for example, if you look something about Java on YouTube, you are going to find a lot of those courses. Um, or may I say a lot of tutorials, short tutorials, long tutorials, these, course, these videos are not really that uh, scripted or they don't belong to, uh, to an ordered playlist that is actually trying to teach you uh, how to develop software in Java properly. Uh, the thing is that if you really want to learn um, beyond the hello world uh, program on, on Java or whatever else, um, or whatever programming language you are trying to learn. The truth is that you are going to commit uh, a lot of time um, just researching. Uh, you are going to commit uh, a lot of effort because nobody learns just by watching videos. Um, and the third thing that you are going to be committing is money. And why money? Because you rather invest money than time. Uh, money you can get, uh, uh, you can get more of as long as you live, of course. Uh, but time, one, once time is gone, uh, you don't get it back. So if you can invest, uh, let's say, uh, $30 in a month of subscription, um, on, on a learning website, uh, and if you find the value in that, uh, go for it. If you, if you find yourself buying books, if you are the, the, the kind of person that learns better reading, uh, then invest yourself in a, in a couple of books and, and actually practice the exercises there, the examples, and put the teachings to the test. Because most of the time, even though you are paying for a book or a, or, or a video course, you're going to find yourself that when you actually try to exercise what they are teaching, uh, most of the time, you're going to find yourself um, stuck or something doesn't work as intended or the explanation is not updated to the current year or the current version of the software. And you're going to be finding uh, more often than not, you're going to be finding these, uh, these walls in your development as a coder or programmer. So what to do when you when do you get into the frustration phase? Well, um, you are going to be frustrated, of course, yes. Um, the thing is that if you're losing too much time trying to get something simple to work, and let's put an example with Java, uh, if you are getting uh, a lot of time wasted on just trying to compile a program that you actually just copy-pasted from the internet, you know it, it should compile and run, and it just doesn't, uh, then I would recommend you that instead of spending hours uh, browsing the internet looking for, for an answer and trying different things, I would actually suggest you to just just get um, a, a programming book about Java or, ba or if you are able, um, try to find a video on YouTube or any other website that actually shows you how to install the Java Virtual Machine or the Java Development Kit um, on this example, I guess, for your operated system. 
and just go from there. The thing is, how do I know all this? Well, I, I did face this problem at the beginning. I subscribed to a website called Pluralsight with great courses. And I do believe that the one of the first courses I watched um, was one about Java. So I if I recall, um, the installation process of the virtual machine was pretty straightforward on the video. And the... And running the Hello World program was pretty straightforward on the video too. Uh, yet, once I got my hands um, on the actual software, the truth is that when I tried to to install the Java Virtual Machine, I followed the instructions. And once that was done, I tried to execute the the compiler to compile my bytecode, and that didn't work at the beginning. I tried to uh, to see what was happening. I don't remember what the problem was specifically. What I do remember is that I wasted around a week just trying to get the thing to run. So, so yeah, um, you're going to be facing a lot of frustration. And I do recommend that if you, uh, this is uh, something I do. Uh, once you find how to solve a very complex problem that is a, uh, that should not be complex. Uh, like for example, I just installed, um, Ubuntu yesterday. There is a new version to the, uh, there is a new version out. It's called, I believe is 1804.02, I believe. Um, I installed that and my video card was not detected by default. I wonder if that is because, uh, it's a, it's an NVIDIA RTX 2070. So it's one of the new ones, the RTX uh, NVIDIA cards. So maybe that's a problem. I did try a lot of uh, solutions I found online, uh, like for example, adding a PPA in Linux. Uh, I'm not going to explain what that is, but it's basically you are adding a, a software source into your software repository inside Ubuntu, and you are able to install software from there. Uh, that didn't work for me. I don't know uh, if I did something wrong. I guess I did. Um, but the thing is, I needed to commit more time and resources. So what did I do? Uh, in the end, I found a blog post from a guy uh, like two days ago. And he was actually trying to install the drivers for his own um, RTX 2080 Ti card on Ubuntu. So I follow his instructions. I downloaded the drivers directly from the NVIDIA website. Uh, most of the tutorials uh, don't actually encourage you to do that because uh, it's actually really hard to install if you are not uh, familiar with the uh, with the drive with the video drivers on Linux. So yeah, you may find yourself with a with an un with a Linux distribution or installation that you cannot actually use because uh, the screen just uh, stopped working, so you cannot, so you can you just get a black screen and you are not able to to watch what's going on and you need to reinstall the, the entire thing. But the thing is, if I was able to pay, uh, let's say, two a couple of bucks to fix the problem in five minutes, I will. Uh, if I had the chance to do that, I will actually do it. So, the thing I'm going to do now is, um, at the moment, uh, when a frustration point like that happens, what I do is I, uh, I type down, um, how did I solve it inside a, a, a text uh, file and I keep it safe for the next time I need to actually install the thing. Um, but now that I've been testing out the waters with YouTube, and the podcasting, obviously, you are you are listening to this. Uh, I just decided to actually recreate those tutorials or those notes in video format because uh, now I, I I do have the resources to actually record what's going on on the on the screen and just uh, be more explicit uh, and create actual tutorials that that people will find relevant on the current year. Uh, we are on 2019 on the moment. If you are listening to this in the future, I wonder if uh, 
Is socialism has just <laughs> changed the entire face of the world for the better? I don't think that's going to be the case, but I wonder. Well, never mind. The thing is, getting back into coding and leaving politics aside, uh, commitment is just about um, fulfilling your promises. For example, you are when you are committing to to a cause, for example, or to learning to code. In this case, you may make the promise to you know what I'm going to be learning how to code websites. I'm going to be learning how to. Uh, develop, create, and maintain databases. I'm going to learn how to program, uh, compile software using C++ or C or C Sharp, or I want to do, um, uh, who knows, uh, a, a video card driver, why not? Uh, using Golang, who knows? The thing is, whatever you want to do in the coding industry, in the programming industry, um, you are going to need to commit not just your time and effort. You are going to be committing money. Why? Because you are going to soon find, uh, find soon enough that when you get the ability, or may I say, when you get the knowledge in order for you to develop the ability or uh, the skills required to, to practice your job, you are going to be looking at your current tools uh, the most, more often than not. You're going to find thing. You're going to find your own tools. Uh, one thing, you may like to f to buy uh, a new laptop for your coding, or if you have a laptop, you may like to buy um, a, a separate computer just for just for installing um, a different operating system on it, and install the database engine and the web server and whatever software you need to create a, a private server for yourself and do some research there, there is nothing better than having a physical server in your own home network or your work network or your school network and experiment on that. It's, it's just not the same than doing it on your local computer because in your local computer, you are not facing a lot of problems that come uh, when you are working with networks. So anyway... Uh, it's been like 12 minutes, almost 13 minutes already. Let's wrap it up. I do recommend you to, if you want to save your bail, your valuable time, spend some money on websites like Plurisite. There is another one called lynda.com. Uh, I believe, uh, after a couple of years, uh, um, two, three or four years ago, it was sold to LinkedIn and now it's called LinkedIn Learning, I believe. I don't recommend uh, Linda.com that much today because most of the creators uh, left the company uh, right after it was sold to LinkedIn. To LinkedIn. So, yeah, I don't know. Uh, actually, never mind that. If you are actually a beginner, a beginner, you may like to get there first because uh, there is a, a very large library there of courses that are still relevant especially for the programming languages like Java, C Sharp, C++, uh, C, uh, I believe scripting languages like JavaScript, Lua are often, um, are often, uh, very popular there. And there, and I do recommend in, on lynda.com, uh, that you look for a specific, uh, author called, uh, Simon Allardyce. I'm going to link his, um, uh, so his Twitter, I guess. He should be on Twitter, I guess. Um, you can ask, look for him. He's great teaching. He's, uh, he's a great programmer. Um, his teaching techniques is just on par. You are going to be learning a lot. You need to practice what you are learning or you are not going to learn anything. Nobody learns just by watching videos. So get your hands on your keyboard and begin coding and compiling if you need to compile. Or execute the, your interpreter, your interpreter, and get, get your hands, you just get to work. Um, you need to commit yourself to it because, uh, there is nothing, uh, there is no, no greater waste of time than learning something and not using it for anything. So you're going to learn how to develop websites, build them, 
don't just jump to the next framework. Don't jump to the next uh, um, uh, design software. Don't jump to the next programming language. If you are learning how to make websites, build one. Just just build one. I don't care if this is if this is not going to be the next uh, the next Instagram. No no matter. If you are going to learn uh, Android development, mobile development on iOS. Build an, build an app. Don't just sit on your knowledge. You need to practice your skills. If you feel like you are not experienced, oh, big surprise. You just learn how to do something. You haven't done anything. Of course, you don't really know how to build something. So you need to get your hands dirty. So over preparation is an issue only if you, you are not actually building something. If you are building something, then your quote unquote over preparation is not really over preparation because you are going to realize soon enough that you actually need to develop your skills. Your knowledge may be okay. You just need to develop the skills and you need to get better tools and you are going to need to improve your skills. So basically, uh, imagine yourself as a warrior and you are going to war. So when you are going to war, you win the war, you kill the enemy, get back to your home. And instead of just sitting on your ass, uh, scratching your belly, what you need to do once uh, peace time comes is you need to go to the forge and you need to practice. You need to you need to grind the blade so it's sharper, even even more than the that the that the last time. So when the time of war comes again, you are better prepared than the last time, and you are harder to kill than the last time. So. If you already have the tools in your hand and they are perfect, well, then what you need to do is training. Go to the gym and train. In this case, read books, practice the exercises on the books, watch video courses, practice the video courses, uh, apply yourself in websites for freelancers like Fiverr, I believe. Um, get some uh, freelance work. Why not? You, even if it's a little thing, you are going to learn a lot, a, a lot of develop, of software development just by doing actual work. And if you are, if you don't feel the confidence to work for somebody else at the moment, well, build something for yourself. It doesn't need to be big. It doesn't need to be uh, perfect. Build something for you that you are going to actually use. Something, and, and even better, you may actually build something that you will actually pay to to do so yeah to get so well that's it i guess uh, i near the 20 minute mark i believe uh, that should be enough for today so remember commit yourself commit your time commit your effort and commit your money it's going to be worth it in the end but only if you get to the end so goodbye